All right, y'all, welcome back to Coming Arms Channel. Okay, today we're checking out another video from the Butasov Plus, or maybe it's Plus actually, now that I think about it. We're checking out another video from the Butasov Plus YouTube channel. Now, I'm not exactly sure where this particular video takes place. I imagine it's probably still around the outskirts of Bakhmut, but this one is pretty crazy because there's like a Humvee blows up, a tank blows up, there's like a minefield involved, and then I guess they end up pushing the assault and shooting down a Russian FPV drone or something. And it's about 16 minutes long, so for all that to happen in just 16 minutes, is uh, it's gonna be pretty action-packed, I would imagine. And it looks like there's a few perspectives as well. So yeah, should be interesting. Let's check it out. Jeez, dude. Those mines are freaking not something to laugh at. That's actually a pretty cool patch there. Huh, it's got the Ukrainian colors with the American flag. Oh yeah, he's even got the, like the, the neck protection. Pretty, pretty nice thing to have with that artillery and the mines and all the just general shrapnel. Okay, so this is what we captured on the last yes. mission? Yes. Okay, never mind. You shoot in <laughs> I wonder where, where he's from. It's changed now, okay? <laughs> okay, we will see. Okay. Okay, so they just shot it up. Uh, so it's Motorized Infantry Brigade? Oh, Mark 19, dude. We've been seeing that like every now and again, the automatic grenade launchers, but those things are perfect for this kind of environment, especially with all the trenches. Like if you're just trying to assault like a linear trench, having something like that to just freaking suppress it. And again, it has like that arch to it. So as far as hitting those targets in the defilade, kind of like in that lower terrain, yeah, it's, it's perfect for that. Interesting tattoo. Oh, that's no simple task for sure. Especially with those freaking mines. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool to see that there's a lot of people who are going to die. But we always thought that there's a lot of people who are going to die. He seems so at peace with that. Well, this time, this time, the tank will be able to do it. But the chance of dying is also there. Yeah, for real, dude. Who else has 556? This is kind of cool. We haven't seen like the ammo issue. Ever. Six boxes? I don't I imagine the boxes have like twenty rounds each or something. So 120 rounds. Yeah, uh I don't know if they had more, but that's not gonna take you that far. I mean I know at least for us we had like seven mags, full mags ish, twenty-nine rounds, twenty-eight rounds was generally the combat load. Сзади нас три машины получается, две разведки наша, то есть нам нужно ждать, чтобы они все развернулись, встали, встали в колею, и нам нужно смотреть еще контролировать танк. Ну, танк танк все, опять, да, три минуты у него это все, и три минуты у вас, чтобы высадить, развернуться, уехать. Damn, it's cool seeing, seeing like the gearing up. What does he have? A bunch of AT4s oh, like or that. something? No, not sure what those are. Real Scottish <laughs> Braveheart. That's what I know. Hell yeah, dude. Nice tats. Lova, combat killed. Combat killed. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, we saw that in the other video, huh? He's also, it looks like he's got, I don't know, it looks like that was like Pacific Islander kind of tattoo, like Samoan or something. Show us, please, your weapon. What? What do you take? He's got girl. five, five, six. Tidy girl. Oh snap! What is that? An ACR? M4. Screw up. Yeah. It's like bag of grenades. Grenades. <laughs> Just a dump pouch. How many grenades? <laughs> Shit. Yeah, last time four, but last time I took nine. Oh yeah, no kidding. Yeah. He's got the accent and everything. Badass. To travel light. <laughs> Just a bunch of grenades and a dump pouch, that's funny. 
Oh, that looks annoying though. Just swinging around. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather have their grenades than not. That's that's for sure. Hey, smoke it while you can. Смотрю, по экипировке уже, что у них готово ли все. Скажем так, беспалевно проверяю наличие оружия противотанковых средств. Экипировка. Смотрю, состояние бойцов так. Все мотивированы, все готовы. Задачи разъяснены. Возможные варианты, как позитивные, так и негативные, рассмотрены. Huh. То есть точки эвакуации там назначены, объяснена суть задачи, потом то какая поддержка и прикрытие есть, какая была проведена подготовка. So it looks like he's not necessarily doing like like kind of going soldier by soldier doing the pre-combat checks. It looks like he's kind of just generally looking over them, which is cool. It kind of conveys a level of, of trust in, in everybody to get their own stuff ready. But of course, yeah, he's looking for those anti-tank weapons, making sure they're still there, making sure people have their weapons, have ammo, of course. But yeah, it's kind of interesting to kind of see these pre-combat checks, him also talking about the mindset, kind of how they're also going over the plan at, at kind of like the last minute. So yeah, all kind of crucial stuff that you usually see. I mean, even with like with us, it's part of our doctrine to do this stuff. But it's kind of interesting. We don't really get to see that too much with these videos. Где союзные подразделения, то есть где противника. Yeah, that's good to reiterate. <laughs> Oh man, the sound of that Humvee, so familiar. Главное, что мне треба зробити, обережно зачинити. Вот так. Я правильно выканал? Да, 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 да. Так я забыл, что осталось само доводчики поставить и все. Абсолютно. Oh nice. Oh yeah. Завтра отпуск, блять, не забудьте. Понял, один кат, один день отпуска. Мы на импозиции едем дальше. Чули? Скажи, что там их минимум было 150 человек. Людина контужена после подрыва, під час штурму. Специально втек из лекарни, чтобы еще взять участь еще в одном штурме и пострелять из гранатомета. Це самовольна, самоволька, самоволька на штурм. Я просто відключився. Damn legend, dude. Okay. I mean, Humvees look pretty, pretty tidy, pretty solid. And then this thing just fucking tearing it up. Is that the organic like RPG cage, or did they make that one? Yeah, that's cool, a view of him vlogging. Word. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, they all look pretty freaking ready, man. Damn, that terrain is pretty wild too. Was that their tank that got hit? Dude. Yeah. Is that theirs then? Oh my gosh. That's a crazy way to start off an assault. I mean, it's it's gonna be pretty disheartening to see like your your tank, like your main armor get hit by a, a mine like that. Depending on how it is and how those guys are doing as well. Hopefully those guys were all right if it was Ukrainian. Again, I couldn't tell. It looked like it was kind of going a different direction though. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I guess it was theirs, dude. Was that a, was that a mine that what's going on? Are the mines just getting triggered? I've not seen that before. 
I mean, it doesn't look like there's any, I mean, positions really nearby for RPGs. It doesn't look like an RPG either. Okay, snap. Damn, okay. I don't know. Maybe not. It's, they're a lot closer than I thought. It seemed so peaceful right then, but now, now not so much. Okay, so they're securing the tank. It looks like uh, it's still rolling, huh? Man, dude, I hope those guys are all right. That terrain is so fucked, dude. Like, you can't even see. So, like, as a leader, you're trying to, like... Ah, dude. What? It just shredded everything. I mean, I've not seen, like, a Humvee get blown up, especially, like, this close. Ah, dude, they're so close. Ah, that's so wild. Dude, it just shredded that thing. Oh my gosh. Ooh, I can't imagine all the shrapnel like that dude just caught in his legs. Not to mention the obvious concussion you're getting from that. Shit, that is such a gnarly area to stop in. And again, like with all these landmines, you have to be so careful just how you're moving around. Yeah. Again, as a leader, like I'd be getting out trying to control everybody, trying to see where the enemy is, trying to see what the enemy situation is like, and then start directing guys. But at that point, they're trying to respond to the, the tank that just got blown up, try and render some aid for those guys, hopefully. And then, of course, you also need to be cognizant of just other landmines. And I'm not sure if these are getting activated by, you know, personnel, if they're anti-personnel kind of mines as well. But again, it's just, you wouldn't even want to risk that. So everybody needs to be really careful. So as the leader's trying to move people, they're also being very careful just in how they move themselves. And yeah, it's just... It's hard. It's a hard position to be in, especially when you're actually under fire. What's that sound? Is that the tank still like high the Dude, that, you would not be able to see it very well at all. Damn, that's so scary. Oh, so I can't tell if he's the leader or not. It looks like he's trying to, they're trying to organize some people, at least trying to get accountability. And of course, you're going to want to after everybody starts getting like blown up and people start moving to different areas just to see cover or get out of the immediate danger area. People are going to start getting dispersed. So accountability is pretty crucial. They're kind of reconsolidating right now. I wonder how many international guys there are talking about the foreigners though. We saw a couple, I know that. That's so disheartening. Hey, he's making a decision now, and that's that's pretty much what you need to do at that point. Okay, so there are some Americans, huh? Давай просунемось трошки, якщо там є окоп чи заглиблення. Бо ми тут сидимо біля танку. Yeah, you probably don't want to be near the... Yeah, the tank. Бо вони зараз бачать, що в них є танчик рідь. Та звичайно, але танчик буде вбити. Oh, but moving, man, just moving again through that at all is pretty scary and then I guess they're looking to move to a trench look like his magazine yeah his magazine's not in I wonder if it got blown out or something or if he just accidentally hit it out 
Oh, there is a. Dude. Who are you up, bro? So they probably pushed out whenever the armor was moving up maybe. Right. Oh, it's nice. At least these guys, these guys have some cover, but again, it's easy to get this first. Oh, dude, where's he hit that? He's so calm about it. Sheesh. Dude. Damn, these guys are tough. What's that? Uh -huh. Значит, передай монаху на три наши человека, которые есть. Если они цели, не раненые, они перегруппируются с разведкой. Сейчас будет второй снежный штурм. So I wonder how big their force was. I mean, one a Humvee got hit. Those guys are going to be kind of out of it at the very least. Складно після того, як відкотилась перегрупуватись, зібрати до купи. Як там у нас військові кажуть, зібрати раму, командир треба каже, що треба. І каже, хлопці, збирайтесь, треба робити роботу. Прийшлося орієнтуватись по краю двох посадок і по тому, як по нам почав працювати кулемет. До кулеметника було 25 метрів. 25 метрів від машинкана? Не більше, ніж 25 метрів. Ну, це вже зона. Це тільки один, ти? Плотного вогнього було прийнято рішення відпрацювати по ворожому окопу з РПГ. Після пострілу пішли і вже вход пішли за нами. Хлопці молодці, була комунікація, вони чули командира. Тоді я пам'ятаю, він сказав, що один вже виходить з окопу, але ще ворог знаходиться. На позиції. So still a few of them on the position then. Я кажу обережненько, ідіть вперед. So, but I wonder, it looked like there was maybe like three of them and probably about an equal number of of guys inside the trench, which is always harder, of course, if you're going to be the attackers hitting a pretty fortified or at least even just a general defensive position. It's nice to generally have like a three to one ratio, but with these guys, they don't necessarily have you know that that luxury to have that when you're talking about the personnel. So. I mean, looks like the shock and all. It seems like it's going to be pretty effective for them. Fifteen kills. One grenade, that he achieved his goal. That vicious bullet that he ran after us from the position and shot at us. On us, he did a hit. And they're being targeted by the Germans. And the boys are shouting "drone." I turn around, I see that the drone is a very different model, very high. Oh my gosh, dude, you're like you're trying to assault some guys that are like 25 meters from you, and then you have to start looking up when you're having like different planes. Like, you have a general sector of fire, and then you have people in like different ranges. But then when you have to start looking like up as well, man, it's a lot, a lot to try and manage, and it's kind of hard as a leader again to kind of decide where to put effort. Добре, що ми зреагували і вийшло. Підбити той дрон Камікадзе, який загорівся ще в повітрі, як бенгальський вогник. Почав горіти, завис на декілька секунд, потім впав і ще досить довго горів, потім зірвався. Ворог подумав, що ми другий раз не підемо. І мені здається, що вони не розраховували, що ми підемо через годину, отак от зробимо ривок і по темному будемо брати. Нам це зіграло на руку. Оці трьохсоті, що при першому заході, їх поранення врятували нас від поранень. Я так вважаю. Чергова робота. Дякувати Богові, дякувати командирові, дякувати пілотам і всі наші підтримці. <laughs> okay.
Yeah, I think uh, pretty well deserved, huh? Man, a T probably hits different after a battle like that. Никто не загинув, завдання виконано. Ну, це Damn, that home B. Again, they're pretty resilient, more resilient than I thought. Oh yeah, this is just a part one. Oh, це наш хамі. Що тут у нас в горах кинув? Це я. Українська земля, звільнена українськими воїнами. Честь і слава. 59 мотопехотні бригаді. Oh yeah, dude. Again, it just goes to show there's so many Ukrainian units that are just out there on the front line just doing a bunch of these just insane operations, stuff that you wouldn't even like see in a movie, except now we're seeing it with all these GoPro perspectives, with the drone perspectives. And yeah, it's just stuff that like if you told me, I'd be like, no, there's no way. Like that Humvee just eating that landmine and those guys just taking that and getting out and then again just kind of pushing the fight i mean of course when you're in like a situation like that there's really not a whole lot that you there's really not a whole lot of options it's like well you, i can fight back i can move to a better position or again like i can just sit here by the destroyed vehicle or the damaged vehicle and of course like they were saying that's going to start drawing some fire and you don't want to be chilling there especially if artillery starts coming in but i mean like it didn't look like there was really like a whole lot of like a road there or a trail there, but I mean, you just have landmines all over the place. So I imagine again, you can just forecast generally where an assault might come from and just put landmines there. But I think we're seeing there's just landmines like all over the place and it adds such a wild dynamic. Again, as me having an infantry background, like never in our training have we considered, oh yeah, let's, um, let's, also scan for landmines even while we're patrolling we're never scanning for landmines if you're talking about like the global war on terror where you're doing like kind of patrols like along a road or by a wadi yeah of course you're going to be kind of like understanding that there's potential for ieds or disturbed earth you're going to have someone potentially with like the the cmd or the like the mine sweeper and the id sweeper yeah, you're going to have that, but again, that's kind of just, it's a little bit easier to identify. It's a little bit easier to control the movement. With this, the terrain kind of funnels you in certain areas just because, again, it can get really thick. It can get very tall. It's just hard in general to move through it, and then it conceals those landmines super well. Of course, like when you're in a vehicle, it's going to be much harder to process that as you're driving a little bit faster, and again, you're just going over this tall grass. Yeah, it's, it's, it's scary terrain to be fighting in. But these guys are just doing an incredible job, kind of from what we've been seeing with all these videos. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. If there's anything that's standing out for you, especially if you have like a military background or not, if there's anything that's standing out for you, let me know what that is down in the comment section. Because again, I'm going to be picking up on some things that maybe a lot of other people aren't picking up on and vice versa. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to hear what you guys think. But again, 59th Motorized Infantry Brigade. Yeah, these guys are doing some, some solid work. Again, I'll put the original video in the description. Definitely go and check out his channel. Definitely go and subscribe, support them. Do whatever you can because these guys are some badasses and they definitely deserve it. But that is it for this video. I'll see you all in the next one.